Welcome to the Greatness Together podcast. Curious minds unite. Mother-daughter conversations that delve into the heart of psychology. Thanks for joining us. Mother dearest. Yes, darling. Question for your earest. My era. Your ear. Or my ears. Yeah. My question to you is, have you ever felt that your role of being a mother, though also a mega successful, (gasps) mega amazing, mega famous, mega popular, mega successful, again, entrepreneur, has conflicted, like, your tasks from one role and tasks from another? have created a little dissonance in your vita. (laughs) My vita. (laughs) What's my vita? Life. Life. Ah. Um, Absolutely, all the time. In fact, I was just thinking about this and how I'm so grateful that I did not have anything taking me away speaking-wise this week because I have one more week with you And, uh, you know, Justin needed me around the house yesterday um, for some things that that he was dealing with in his day. And that we have a lot happening, like activities and, you know, tickets to performances and various things that we would miss out on. So I was thinking how lucky I was and how grateful I am that I didn't have any work taking me away. And the last couple of weeks, I've been on the road a lot. And in a couple days from now, I'm back on the road again. So that is, I think, an example of where role conflict can happen is that I love what I do and I love being with clients and I've chosen to do this work as a speaker. And part of what comes along with the package is travel. And when I'm traveling, I am away from you guys. I miss those little micro moments of connection that happens over the dinner table or as you know, you're leaving the house and I'm getting dinner ready or whatever. And, uh, and so life, life feels sometimes like a bit of a trade-off where you want the best of both worlds for sure. And sometimes those line up well, and sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you sometimes have role conflict? Yeah. So, Maybe we should define it. So it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you explained it example-y in, yes, through I, examples. I did use an example-y situation. Yes. So role conflict is when our societal roles, like two or more societal roles, conflict. So our societal roles could be being a mother, being an entrepreneur, being a dancer, being a, uh, what else are societal roles? Politician. Politician, student. Volunteer. Mm Mm-hmm. So, like, a big one for parents, if they work, would be um, maybe driving their students to their, like, baseball game Mm. though the baseball game is at a time that you would be working Mm -hmm. in your other societal world as a whatever you do for work Mm -hmm. and when those conflict it's like which one do I prioritize like Mm -hmm. parent like being a parent is very important but also being able to provide for your family Mm-hmm. is very important so you kind of create like this cognitive dissonance in your mind because you have to decide and decipher and mm-hmm. psychologically get all turned up yes and it creates it creates it, it creates you know it, it creates, creates some tension it, creates can, some and tension. it can cre- create some some um feeling like, you know, you're not doing any of life right from Mm -hmm. time to time. I remember that feeling very, very well um, of not feeling like I'm doing the mom thing right, the work thing right. I was often doing courses, so I wasn't doing well enough as a 
as a student in whatever programs, I was trying to do research, write books, that they, there were a lot of different roles. I was spinning a lot of plates and I didn't feel I was doing any one of them right. And there are some phases of our life where it's pretty challenging to get any one of those things really right because the, the load, I think they call it load, workload, role load, emotion load was so high that you literally could not do all of them well. I see this all the time in the caregivers and the people facing professions that the load of even one role, such as nurse, the role of nurse that is at, at work in a shift, you're a coworker, a colleague, maybe you're leading a group, perhaps you're involved in a project, you want to help the families, you want to you know, be there for your patients, what one patient needs, another patient needs. So even within one, technically one role, you can have role conflict because there's multiple parts of your role. So I think it's an important thing to talk about because we kind of, we don't, because we just accept that that's part of the challenge. We just feel really burnt out and we feel we have this learned helplessness, like there's nothing I'm going to be able to do about it. And, and I, and I'm glad that we're talking about this now because this is something that you and your generation probably experience. And maybe there can be some trying out of strategies that are going to help you navigate those things. I actually think you do it a lot better than I did when I was a student. I felt like I had to do it all. And I think you're, you're a lot better about trying to, at least I see you less stressed and less intense than, than I was in an unhealthy way because you've got a lot of roles. You're juggling being you know, at times a girlfriend, a, a, a friend, a student, a, a, you know, working, doing this, other, other work, researching opportunities. So you, it's, it's not just those of us with full-time jobs. It's also students have, you know, role conflict too, I would think. Mm-hmm. Was, is that your yeah, experience? Yeah, it's worse over time as you get a parent and stuff. So what if in fact, what if it, what if it didn't have to be worse? Like what advice will you give your future self um, hearing what I'm talking about to be able to um, manage those that that knowing that you will experience role conflict and that it will not be not feel as manageable as perhaps the very about juggling the different roles that you have now. What advice do you think? you could give yourself now that you want to remember then? Um, well, the way I handle my role conflict right now and something that I'll take into the future is like setting schedules and setting time aside for mm -hmm. different roles. So when I'm like doing school and stuff, like I'll set a schedule for my school things and then when I want to set time for other roles like exercise and stuff mm -hmm. I'll like I'll like prioritize like prioritize school set time aside for school and then set time aside for other things which I know is kind of tricky as you get older because you get long hours at jobs and sometimes you need to work out of out of office hours and mm -hmm. stuff like and you bring that work home to your other roles mm -hmm. of being a parent or being a partner or whatever right that's where the clash happens because it's overlapping mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so really just setting time aside i guess like or even setting like place aside if that mm -hmm. makes sense like oh, okay going into a separate room mm -hmm. or, if possible, or just... That does work. I can really relate to that because we are physically in my workspace. This is yeah. a barn. It's a converted space. So I work upstairs. This is our podcast slash virtual speaking studio. And so I can physically separate myself, even though I work for myself. And, and when I'm not on the road, I work from home. I work from home, but I'm not physically in my own home. So I hear what you're saying because... That helps me with when I, Mark and I, when dad and I can joke when I'm like, 
enjoy your commute, I walk across the front lawn. <laughs> um, but it's it's a separation. So you're right, like having that. And for other people, it's having an office space or having a place where you can put your things yeah. and close it away. Yeah, no, that's a good point because often you don't like you don't want to associate certain areas with a different role. So I know like um, for you when you do your talk sessions, therapy mm -hmm. sessions, mm -hmm. are they in here? Yes. Yeah, like your, your role of being a therapist, his client, I yes. guess, if that's a role, yeah. mm -hmm. and your role of being, of being an entrepreneur, of working in here, they may conflict because you'll con, like you don't want to condition an area of your life with something that like is kind of unsettling. You don't want to condition mm -hmm. your office mm -hmm. with the idea of like what you talk about mm -hmm. in therapy or just therapy all around. So, um, I guess that would Everyone, also... Everyone, the therapy couch is the one that Simone's on. Oh. So, oh. just so that you know. That's why there's tears on it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's why it's wet. <laughs> you see my part? Um, so, I guess that could be another thing I'd, I'd give advice to people slash myself. Like, don't associate, like... I guess unsettling mm -hmm. roles with um, an area or like a role that you are like partake in often. Like just just simply separate your spaces. You yeah. know, have have some. It's it's the concept of boundaries, and you're literally creating some physical boundaries between where you do one thing. And letting yourself be very present in it. And then when you leave it, letting yourself leave it. Because with a hyper-connected world where you could be answering your emails literally anytime you're conscious. <laughs> and mm -hmm. who knows, maybe they'll stick a computer in our brain in the next couple of years. And we'll be <laughs> able to answer our emails when we're sleeping. Who knows? Oh, if only that were a joke. But um, it's, it's having... Um, it's recognizing that it's that we're allowed to turn off and that it's unhealthy if we don't turn off. And so part of the conflict may not actually be about the role. I think one of the things that I'm just, the aha moment I'm having in this conversation is the conflict can be the lack of boundary setting that we are allowed to shift roles mm. and turn off one role and turn on another role. I remember going to watch you guys play soccer and having to take with me my on-call binder because when you are a senior leader in a hospital you have to be on call 24 hours a day for one week at a time because if something happens you can't just have nobody there available to support it and then when i take took over public relations as part of my portfolio in my last role I had to wear my, I had to have my Blackberry by the bed 24 hours a day, every day, unless I was on vacation and I would leave it with a colleague. I had to have it there all the time. And there weren't many times when I would get a call in the middle of the night, but I do remember that there was somebody who was live streaming, somebody who was engaging in some very risky behavior. And I had to and not only answer the phone, I almost had to leave in the middle of the night to go to the hospital to deal with this potential public relations nightmare. Unfortunately, we were able to contain it. But the point was, I couldn't turn off my phone. I literally never fully felt, unless I was on vacation, disconnected from work. Mm. So, And that's an example where, as you were saying, like create a different physical space. Well, unless I was going to stay awake 24 hours a day, my Blackberry had to come and sit beside my bed. This is how long ago this was. This is 10 years ago when we actually still had blackberries. Um, some of you may be thinking, what's a blackberry? I thought it was a fruit. What's the problem with fruit being by the bed? It was before we had iPhones, we had blackberries. That might have been better. Yeah, it might have been better to have fruit beside my bed. Um, so, so one of the things that I do, I learned very quickly from that and what I wanted to do differently when I became an entrepreneur is not only have this physical space separation and we made it a priority to build this building, but also 
I part of why I'm so fortunate to have an amazing team around me and why I invest in it in having great people like Monica who does the production of this podcast and Mallory who will proofread my my uh, my articles that I write and you know Tammy who does my speaker management is because and Stacy for and helping you set up Stacy who literally did all the research bought all the equipment and did that for this this studio you're absolutely right Simone is because I could literally spend every waking hour working and and if I didn't have them helping me and I learned long ago that having great people do things that I don't do very well or would take me a long time to figure out um, is important to to make that call and also it's I would rather have a little bit less money or a lot bit less money and have a much healthier more balanced happier life and spend it with the people that matter most to me like you guys then feel like I have to do it all because I kind of used to feel like if I wasn't doing it it might not cut down right but not only is that wrong <laughs> there are so many more capable people than I am <laughs> and so many of the things that I have am responsible for doing in my business um, not only that but it, it would be a recipe of lack of joy in in my work and lack of success in my relationships so any of that helpful for your future self simone 100 percent. i took note of all of that all of it i'm gonna write it in my diary <laughs> and then put it in an envelope and say open when you're 29. well you could also take a look at this recording that will go away never uh oh uh oh so why don't we leave you, dear listeners, um, with this, is where are you experiencing a crossover negative conflict that isn't working for you? And what is possible? What could you do about that? What's within your control? Um, what what is, are you more aware of now as a result of this conversation? And when you are successful in shifting that, what will be different? What do you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah? so intelligent it's so intelligent so wise <laughs> so wise so not bad it's so not bad mm -mm. gosh what a testimonial <sighs> all right my friends thank you so much for tuning in can't wait to see you again and uh have you join us again on the greatness together podcast please remember to uh like share and um rate us anywhere you listen and you catch your podcast bye yes. for now take good care Thanks so much for joining us for the Greatness Together podcast. Never miss an episode. Subscribe wherever you catch your podcasts. Yours in greatness, Simone and Sarah.